Here is one of these cheap Chinese-made 12-volt switch mode power supplies that you can find all over eBay with various different output power ratings. They are advertised as being designed for LED lighting systems. So if you search for LED power supply or something along those lines, you are going to find them. I ordered one out of curiosity and because I happen to need a 12 volt power supply. And of course, before turning it on, I had to take it apart. Uh, this one came with this uh, instruction sheet. Very interesting translation to German. Not necessarily a correct translation to German. This is the main circuit board and of course I could not keep my hands from this and I had to correct some of the issues that this had. The soldering is actually relatively good. Can't complain about any of that. But these are the output filter capacitors. They are in parallel to the output. This, by the way, is the load resistor. Of course, these switch mode power supplies do need a minimum load to work properly, and that's what that thing is for. It's also connected straight across the output. Now, the capacitors, uh, they are, as you can see, low ESR, and they do actually have 105 degrees Celsius temperature rating, so... Well, they're probably not too bad, aside from the fact that they are no-name capacitors. What I didn't like is they actually left one space unoccupied. There were three of these, and then this space was uh, empty. So I put in another 1,000 microfarad capacitor. To support the output filter capacitors at filtering out high-frequency noise, I have installed this 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitor straight across the output terminals. The input filter capacitor is a Nippon Chemicon, unless it's a fake, of course. The components have been installed in a rather, rather messy way, as you can see, and I have already fixed a bunch of them. I just left this capacitor here as an example. This is, of course, something that I'll also have to fix shorten the leads and install the capacitor as close to the circuit board as possible so that it can work more effectively. The aluminum case doubles as a heatsink and they have used heatsink compound as you can see. However, this block of aluminum right here that connects to the case as an additional heatsink, from there to over here, there was no heatsink compound, so as you can probably see, I have added some. Regarding the electrical safety, we have the mains input over here on these two terminals. There is the safety ground, and then we have the output terminals over here. So there is the safety ground dividing the input from the output, so that's okay. We have a mains input fuse right here. And this capacitor, which is connected across the mains, does have the necessary X2 rating, so that's nice. I guess what you can complain about is the fact that, uh, well, given that you cannot really tell what is the primary side and what is the secondary side, uh, the design of the PCB probably does leave some things to be desired from a safety point of view. Clearance between the board and the case appears to be sufficient, but since the case is connected to safety ground, it's not a problem anyways. I now have the power supply reassembled and connected to the mains. We do get a little green power indicator light next to the voltage adjustment. The minimum output voltage is about 10.7 volts. The maximum output voltage is about 13.9 volts, so you can also use this as a battery charger. I now have the power supply connected to a 4 ohm resistive load. Current is about 2.8 amperes. 
As you can see, if I briefly disconnect and then reconnect the load, the voltage drop is pretty minimal, meaning we have a good voltage regulation. 2.8 amperes at 12 volts means we're taking about 33 watts out of this unit, which is only a third of what this is rated for. So, as you'd expect, it isn't critical temperature-wise. As you can see, the main switching transistor is up at well, about 32 degrees Celsius, or, let's see, that is about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Monitoring the off-load output voltage on the oscilloscope, as you can see, as typical for switch mode power supplies, the output is not entirely clean. If I now go and reconnect the 4 ohm resistive load, as you can see, things do get quite a bit worse. We have about, let's see, 100 millivolts per division, so I'd say about 500 millivolts peak to peak of a ripple voltage, which of course is undesirable. You can clearly see the switching frequency of the power supply, which I have marked using the cursors. And down here you can see switching frequency is about 80 kilohertz. So it should not, at least in theory, it should not interfere with audio circuits all too badly. At least you won't be able to hear it. So since it's theoretically able to do it, Let's see if this 12 volt switch mode power supply really can power audio circuits. Here I have a little preamplifier, main amplifier, and a couple of random test speakers. This is all hooked up to a CD player. Now, in the past, I have made bad experiences. I once tried powering an amplifier using an ATX computer power supply, and it was terrible. It was humming and buzzing and clicking, totally unenjoyable. So I'm really quite surprised to report that this is almost entirely silent. Aside from that nasty turn-on click, which is due to this preamplifier chip. Also, there is some faint white noise. And once again, it's most likely due to the TDA1524 preamplifier chip, which is not only a nice convenient tone control, but also a great noise generator. So, as you can clearly hear, this experiment is a success. So, you can all look forward to a future video in which I'll be assembling this system in combination with this Bluetooth receiver unit into a nice case. Until then, thank you for watching.